Welcome to our first ever Minority Coaches Next Up class. This is the class of 2021. And I'll go through what we are, who I am, and who these guys are here in a second. And, but I'll, I'll start off with this. These guys are all super talented coaches that were nominated by somebody else. Some of those were people that we had on our network that, that we saw and we're like, yo, this, this person is super talented. We want to have them a part of this class. Some I've never heard of you. I've never, not, I shouldn't say never heard of you. I've heard of you, but never met you before until I got this. I heard a name or I've seen something you guys have done. Um, but as we came together as a group to find these coaches, these were the guys that kept coming up. These guys were talented guys, guys that did something good here, did something good there. Uh, some of these guys you see on this list are, are ready to be head football coaches at the collegiate level. Some are young up and coming coaches that are going to be a head football coach or could be at that level in five to 10 years. And that's the, the group we wanted to put together here. As you see from a minority coaches perspective, when we look at the division one level, there are 24 openings. I believe as of today, there is one minority coach that has been hired a, a great hire at Notre Dame, Marcus Freeman, who was a hire from within, obviously, and may, maybe one actually, I don't know what's going on at, at Miami right now. There might be another one going on that goes from Oregon to Miami. I don't know. But obviously, we all know that, that there's an issue with that. And there's a way to continue to talk about minority coaches and continue to do this and continue to say that. But we want to not just speak about it. We want to be about it. And that's why we said this is something when we talked last year, when we launched last year, this was a big part of what we wanted to do to help bring opportunities to places that don't get the opportunities they should be getting. So I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. Who am I? I'm one of the co-founders. My name is Pat Curran. I know most of you or I've met most of you. I was a D1 player at Bowling Green. I played for some good young coaches, a guy named Urban Meyer, a guy named Matt Campbell was a GA, a guy named DJ Durkin was a GA when I was around, uh, and a shit ton of names that have, have been around college football for a long time. Dan Mullen, who just got let go. Uh, he was our quarterbacks coach. Ridiculous staff, but I, I kind of always knew I wanted to get into coaching. And then I ended up doing that D2, D3 ball, and I coached some high school stuff, now working more so on the, the coach athlete marketing branding side. Ma'am, what is our coaching network? Why did we do this? We started this last year, September 7th. We had Taylor Housewright from Oregon come on and talk, who's now at Montana State, and talk ball. A big part of this was we wanted to create a community of coaches where the AFCA convention is great. We love that. I'll be there. If you guys are there, please find me. Let's link up or shoot me a message. But that's once a year in person. We wanted to create more of a year-round community and a year-round network. Guys can come on. I can look at the faces over here. We've had of the guys on right now, probably half these guys have already spoken, spoke last year. And that's the reason why they're back on here right now. We want to continue to have great talks around football. That can be scheme stuff. That can be uh, culture. That can be, if you look at the left there, that was, where, that was one week I just screenshotted, uh, which was running backs, tight ends. We talked corners. We had GA talks on there. Uh, a leak is a product of GA talks here. He came on last year as an Oregon GA. Now he's at Hawaii partially because of what he was, what he did on his GA talk and people found him from there. And then just a punt, punt, uh, punt round table that we had last year as well. So what we do is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights, starting next week, we do talks and that's from all levels, guys that are GAs, the guys that are high school guys, D3, D2 to big time FBS guys. And then on the right is just a look at, at, uh, topics and things we do. You can click on those and then you go through there and it has all of our talks that we've done. So every talk that happens on here, like even tonight, we'll put up on the network. You can watch it by tomorrow morning. Also a good way for guys who are looking for to fill a staff, guys who are looking to find, uh, I had guys last year, somebody's trying to get on. I had guys last year hit me up and it was like, hey, I'm looking for an analyst. You know, a good guy this area, this route. I had guys hit me up for coordinator positions or GA spots. And that's not necessarily what we were trying to do at the jump, but that came about because we started to have this ability to be in front of a lot of different coaches, different places. So if there's people you're looking for, please let us know. Uh, if you're not one of our 10 coaches we've selected for the next up series and you want to do a talk, feel free to hit me up too. We're open. Uh, you don't have to be the most dynamic person in the world to come on. We want good talks, but if you feel like you, you want an opportunity, get at me. We can try to make that happen. All right. So what, what is this? What is this about? I'm going to move this over here. Uh, like I said, when I first started this today, what is the next, the minority coach in the next sub series? Now for all of you coaches, I believe five or six of you are on here that are part of this group. Uh, the others are again, like I said, in bowl prep or practice right now. And, and that's totally cool. We'll talk to them next week. But 
I don't want this to just be a tweet. We don't want this to just be a tweet. Like, hey, this is a, co a coach that is next up and, and a really talented coach. That it can be that if that's what you want as, as a coach, that's totally cool. I understand that this some of this stuff may take a, a few uh, a little bit more time, uh, but we want this to really be a movement. Like, find a place where you can talk, where you can find the next guys, and continue to bring up more people. Um, what does this mean? What does joining this first next up class? What is it about? Uh, we have. Like I said earlier, Kelly from Renaissance Search Firm will speak a little bit later. We, we want to have conversations with ADs. We want to talk brand building. Uh, Kelly can speak to this later, but just being a good coach does not get you jobs. Every single one of you knows that. And that being said, there's also great coach or not great coaches that have great jobs. They understand this other aspect of it, which is brand building, which is whether, I mean, that can mean a lot of different things too. A lot of times for me, I think the easiest way to do that, if you are not a coordinator or head coach already is through social media. And so that's a little bit what we'll, we'll talk about and some other things in the future. Uh, and then providing more opportunities, more providing opportunities for you, but also helping you provide opportunities for other people, the next group, the next class, younger coaches, that sort of stuff. Um, we'd love every single one of these next up coaches to do their own clinic talk and help us with future programming. Uh, each coach would also love, Zoe Carter is one of our coaches that is a part of this. He couldn't be here today, but have a Zoe Carter Presents. My thought is like the, the Comedy Central Presents, like the, the Kevin Hart, the really elite comedian, has on these younger comedians that are really good, but maybe everyone doesn't know them as well. Same thing we wanna do with you guys. Is you guys know lots of talented coaches, uh, whether that is somebody who is a high school coach that wants to get into college or a, a coordinator at a FCS level that should be a coordinator at a higher level or whatever that may be. You guys know coaches all over the country that are super talented that are, just aren't getting the rub they should be getting. Well, we want to provide that platform for you guys to help them give that rub. Uh, so that's another aspect of it. Uh, brand building specifically, would love to have, we, uh, we will set up group calls for this specific group. Uh, I'm also down to set up one-on-one -on -one calls too to discuss specific needs, wants around what you do, whether that's around you personally or recruiting or name image likeness is a baby of mine right now too. So all that stuff. Uh, we'd also like this group of guys to become part of our 2022 board members and, and help with future program. Again, a thing you guys don't have to be a part of, but we'd like you to be a part of. Uh, and, and really that would uh, be as minimal as as occasionally having a conversation and occasionally being like, yo, here, who are some guys you think would be great to have come on and speak? That sort of deal. At the end of the day with this thing, we want our coaching network to empower coaches and we are 100% always open to ideas. When we started this GA Talks deal uh, last year, or we started this deal period, Taylor House, right? Who was the guy who came on for our first talk? He and I had talked, I used to coach with, actually I coached him when he was in college, I was a GA. And one of the things we talked about was having a GA talks session where GAs never get to speak. Uh, generally speaking, you're not asked to speak. It's a speak when spoken to type deal, but also you're in a spot where you need to meet people. You need to know people. You need to be able to talk ball because you're not going to be there forever. You're making uh, minimal money and you can only be there so long anyway. So we said, Taylor and I talked and we're like, why don't we create this GA talk session? We'll do half clinics. So 30 minutes instead of a, an hour and we'll do, that we'll, we'll record them, we'll put them out so these guys can use them, we'll clip them, put them on social, and we'll also give them some feedback on things they can improve. We had some great coaches come on who are GAs, who are now full-time guys. Again, one of them is a leak down here. Uh, we also had some guys that needed a lot of improvement and need to get better, and we helped. We hope we helped them learn some of those things. Another idea where uh, um, a coach, Garrett McLaughlin, who's at New Hampshire, he came to us and he was like, hey, I wanna do these special teams clinics where we just do, we'll do five hours, Four, co uh, four coaches come on and present on each aspect of special teams, and then we'll do a round table. We said, cool, let's do it. So again, we want to empower you as a coach to do whatever you want to do with this network. All we simply provide is, is the, the access to it. We make it easy to the Zoom level. We'll record it. We'll clip it. We'll put that all together. Uh, but if you want to do anything, please let us know. And then from here, I, I do want to have each coach who's on our, our uh, next up class introduce themselves briefly. I'll, I'll do that here in a second. And then also we'll have Kelly from Renaissance, Renaissance Search Firm speak here as well. And there's my social. If you don't already follow me, there's me personally. Look at that picture my lady took of me in our kitchen while I was drinking coffee one morning. If you don't follow me, you can feel free to message me or at our coaching net. I, it reminds me of how bad I need a haircut right now with that hair. Anyhow, I'm going to stop sharing. I want our coaches to come on and, and introduce themselves. Uh, the guys who are on uh, part of this class and uh, just just tell us who you are, 
where you are and, and a little bit about yourself, maybe in like a minute, like how you got to here. I'm gonna start up here with Cherokee since you're on the top of my list here. Cherokee Valeria, currently coach at Sacramento State University, defensive pass game coordinator. Um, like we were talking about before, I grew up in Hawaii, born and raised in Hawaii, played a little ball in Washington uh, at a small D2, Central Washington University. Um, and then kind of started coaching high school ball for a little bit and then got back into college ball and then been pretty much in the D2 and the FCS ranks for the last 10 years. Um, so just kind of progressed throughout the whole West Coast and uh, pretty much went to Southeast Missouri State for a year, got back to Eastern and then now at Sac State. So love it. Just, and just and you were a guy that came up more than once with us and we reached What's out. That? You were a guy that came up in this conversation more than once. Like, here's a guy you need to check out. I want to say three different coaches out of the 10 coaches-ish that we reached out to. Like, who, who are some elite guys you think should be on here? So I didn't know you. I've never met you. This is the first time we've ever spoken. But a lot of guys respect what you do. And it speaks a lot, obviously, to who you are and what you do. I appreciate that. I think I think in the coaching community, especially what you're trying to do here, it's all about relationships. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now without the relationships I formed throughout my whole years. I'm talking about D2. I'm talking about FCS. I'm talking about wherever I've been. There have been other coaches that reached out to me and helped me grow as an individual. So I'm always trying to push that back into other people, you know, no matter if it's technique, scheme, or anything like that. And I think that's how this profession really is the best profession out there when it comes to having done, you know, we'll deal with kids and do all that stuff. And, and we all want to mold young men, but when it, when we want to build each other up and make each other the best that we can, that's when this profession becomes something special. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. I love that. I'll go uh, court. Go ahead. Next. What's up fellas. Uh, Courtney Braswell, I'm inside linebackers coach here at Army West Point, uh, man, excited to be a part of this thing with you guys, man. Absolute unbelievable respect for what you guys do, man. It's, a, it's really a privilege and an honor. Uh, my uh, short story about me, just got here. Uh, I was a longtime high school head coach in my home state of Georgia and Tennessee. I uh, made the jump to college in 2019 as a quality control university in Louisville. Uh, coached the outside linebacker at Appalachian State University last year. And now I'm coaching inside here at West Point. So uh, just had the opportunity to meet some guys as a high school coach. Y'all know how it is on the recruiting process. And, man, was just a, just an absolute sponge and, that, that really worked out for me because uh, made some unbelievable friendships and got the opportunity to jump into college, man. So I'm, I'm so grateful uh, that somebody took a chance on me. I guess it was more, it was more so me bucking the heck out of them than it was anything. So I guess that, that worked out pretty well for me. So uh, appreciate you guys having me. Of course. Glad to have you a part of this. Uh, I, I believe he's the youngest guy on here, Leek Terry. I don't know everybody's age, but you're next. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do, young man? How we doing, gentlemen? My name is Alik Terry, offensive line coach at U University of Hawaii, uh, born and raised in Miami, Florida. Uh, played offensive line at Wake Forest University, graduated in 2018. Uh, once I finished at the University of Wake Forest, I went to go work at the University of Oregon as O-line GA for about two years. And then once I finished at the University of Oregon, got blessed with Pat to do the GA talks. Literally did that interview for 30 minutes. Next two weeks, my life changed forever. Probably got about four or five interviews within the next week. Got blessed with the Hawaii one. And now I live in the best place on earth. You get to do the best thing ever. Coaching football, playing the kids game, got me halfway across the world. I'm more blessed than anything, man. I, if I complain, the Lord deserves to take it off. <laughs> I didn't know you had four or five. I knew about two. I guess it was- No, nah, not. Nah. And even after this one came, probably like two or three more stumbled upon me, but I just couldn't say no to this opportunity at all, honestly. I'm with you. First, first full-time gig, you're, you're coaching in Hawaii. That does not yeah. suck. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. Can't take none of it for granted. Well, keep doing great things. I, th you are my personal selection. Uh, yes. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate it. Because I, I, I tell you this, and I, and I know I say every time I see you, I say thank you. If we didn't have that opportunity, I don't know how many opportunities open up. And I just mean this. That's why I take so much pride in this. Because as the minority, as African-Americans, just naturally, as, especially with the offensive line position, it's not a, not a lot of them. So right. if it wasn't for that, that platform to be able to speak and be able to put my, I, I guess you can say the talents I've learned from everybody else out there, this door wouldn't open. Yeah, I mean, we just, we had a platform. We you, you did the great job. If you didn't do a great job, if you didn't kill the interviews, obviously wouldn't do anything. But but again, we want to provide that platform, right? So and then it's on you to to pay it forward. So we'll have we'll have a, an Elite Terry Presents and you can pay yes, it. I got a list of about seven of them ready for you, whenever you're ready. Deal, deal. We'll talk after <laughs> this slide. All right, uh, Kenneth. Let me, go ahead. 
Yeah, so uh, my name is Kenneth Black, or uh, you know, people that are close to me call me KJ, but I'm uh, originally from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, right now, coaching the quarterbacks and offensive coordinator, well, co-offensive coordinator at FAMU. Um, got started full-time about 2015, but I did play a little ball, play quarterback at Western Kentucky, um, also at Prairie View a and back in 2009, 2010. Uh, so going into my seventh year coaching quarterbacks, um, just excited, man. Excited to get on here and learn, network, which is this is a great platform to do it. I've heard a little bit about it. Um, so I'm excited, man, to share anything that I have and to continue to grow and learn uh, from other great coaches. So I appreciate you, uh, Pat, for allowing me to come on here today. Of course. Yeah, I mean, like this is the first time we've talked, right? Right. Like, we texted and whatnot, but I, I didn't I didn't know you personally. I, you've come across my radar, our radar a bunch of times. Uh, Zoe Carter was like, yo, you got to have this dude. He's a part, you know, I don't forget his exact words, but something like that. Like this mm -hmm. dude, stud type deal. Uh, so, so you came highly recommended from Zoe, which a couple other guys did. I like Zoe a lot. Uh, and anything we can help out with, like I said, let me know if you, I, I think you came on a little bit later. You came on, then you left, you came, came back. So I don't know if you had yeah. to, to make you that. But... <laughs> it was a family deal, but I apologize. Oh, I got you. You're good. You're good. I got, I got two kids screaming in the background from time to time. So it's all good. <laughs> I just didn't know if you had Wi-Fi issues, but at the beginning, you know, like would love to have you come on, speak, have you bring other coaches on to speak. I think we want to continue to pay this forward and continue to grow what we're doing. You know, we're just a platform. You know, I, again, I want to empower coaches. I don't want to be like, I'm on here talking. This is, I don't like doing this shit. I'd rather coaches be talking. I'd rather have somebody else be, be a part of this and sit in my chair and talk about this stuff. So I don't want to be the face of this. I want coaches to be the face of it and what, what we're doing, what, what everyone's doing. So, I believe that's our, our guys that are part of the class. Let me double check. Yeah. So uh, anybody else uh, who's on here, if you guys, again, feel free to message me at any point. If you guys want to do something in the future, all the coaches that are part of this class definitely want to talk further. I'll, I'll hit you guys all up separately through text. Next, I want to bring Kelly, uh, Kelly Brooks from Renaissance Search for Mon, just to talk a little bit about uh, what they do, what he does, and bring a different aspect and different angle to this. It's great to talk about what we think works when looking for hiring a position, that's all good and well. But now we've got a guy who hires and works with groups to hire people. So Kelly, I'll shut up. I'll let you take it from here. Guys, well, thank you for having me, Pat. I really appreciate the opportunity to get in front of you guys and just talk shop a little bit. Um, I'm gonna drop a little information in the chat that uh, you guys can, can use for your benefit. I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn also. Uh, dropped our company's uh, website in there for you guys to reference uh, later on down the line whenever you have a few minutes just so you have a little more background. But I'd like to share a little bit, a little bit of my background. I think it's important for people to, to kind of know that you, you guys been in the business long enough to know that, the, that how things happen is, is due to, the, to the, the link in the web in a lot of cases. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm from Starkville, Mississippi originally. Um, so spent most of my life in growing up in Starkville and in, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I had an older sister, way older, 10 years older, that played basketball at Alabama. So I kind of got bitten by the being on campus bug from growing up in two college towns for the most part. Uh, so I ended up growing up an Alabama fan and ended up getting my start basically really early in college athletics as, at 19. I started coaching women's basketball at the Division II level. Um, use that to pay for, for, for my degree, got a math degree, and then end, end up going on to, to Alabama. And uh, when I graduated from college and, and started coaching on the Alabama women's basketball staff. So got there and I spent six years there. I took a little bit of time off from basketball and I did academic support for a couple of years. And that academic support time, I supported football. I was fortunate enough to work for a staff that really opened the door for me. So I spent all my time over at practice, around the guys, in the locker room, travel with the team. So I got a, I got an open door to seeing kind of how you guys operate on a football staff and, and how you move the ship when you travel and, and all of that. So I, I thought that gave me a good insight on, on, on the football world that I'd never gotten before. I went back and, and coached um, on the basketball side for another year and then decided to change over to administration full time for, for the most part. Spent a couple of years at Xavier University, oversaw their academic support area. Um, spent a year as associate commissioner of the SWAC where I oversaw governance and compliance and also uh, football, men's women's basketball championships. Um, and then I went to the NCAA headquarters in Indianapolis and I was there for eight years. 
the last four years, I oversaw the legislative relief waiver team and process, um, which is essentially when the rule books say you can't do something, but you want to do something proactively because there's some kind of unique circumstances, that's the team you come to. The most high profile of those were the transfer waivers. So I always saw them and, and pretty much was in on the transfer waiver decisions there from 2010 to 2014. If you saw it go across the ticker from a, this person's going to be eligible due to transfer immediately, blah, blah, blah. That was, that was me for the most part in my, in my team. So I saw and have seen pretty much every story that you can ever see that's an NCAA eligibility circumstance or, or situation. So nothing surprises me. And then I left the NCAA in 2014. I've been in the consulting world uh, ever since. I live in, Al in uh, Atlanta now. Um, <clears throat> a lot of you guys are football guys, so you may recognize. I live in Beaufort, Georgia, specifically Gwinnett County, North Gwinnett County. Um, so it's, uh, it's really heavy, heavy football concentrated here. Uh, it's playoff time, so everybody's excited around here from a high school perspective. Um, so that's a little bit about my background. Renaissance Search and Consulting was started in early 2020, and the reason was basically for you guys. It's, I mean, to break it down, the CEO is a brother that played college basketball and coached, but also worked in the corporate uh, search, per, search world um, as, a, as a specialist seeking um, individuals that, 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 that could be great candidates in the tech systems, in, in, in a technology space for, uh, for companies like the Apples and IBMs and, and the Googles. And then just started missing the game and ended up coming back and, and started coaching. And I stepped away from coaching in end of late 2019 and decided to start the firm basically saying, hey, I wanna marry my interest in, in the search space. I've done it in the corporate space, but there's a need, a, a specific need in the athletic space to help with opportunities to allow minority coaches to get more head coaching opportunities and minority administrators to get more opportunities in the leadership um, at, the, at the top of the athletic department, whether it's the AD or the deputy, uh, senior associates in that kind of space. He spent enough time around athletics to understand that 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 wasn't being done well, and that's why he started the firm. Um, and to be candid, the firm has caught fire. Um, the brand is really growing for that reason because people are knocking on the door and saying, "Hey, we want to hire differently." Um, in the corporate space, we do corporate searches, but also in the athletic space, say, hey, we want to do a better job of diversifying our candidate pool with the right candidates. And that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to hire a minority. That doesn't necessarily mean the candidate pool is going to be only minorities, but we want the candidate pool to look a little different and look a little better than what we've done in the past. And that's caused us to catch fire. And uh, it has been really good, good so far. So we're, we're not even two years in, and uh, we're doing really good things, I think. Right now, we're, we're in the middle of the Gramlin State head football coach search, um, working on that right now. Um, we've, done, we've done a good bit in the basketball world so far, and, and, and a lot on the administrative side of things in, in athletics. Um, we're, we're doing a search for the Buffalo Bills in their, in their head office uh, right now as well, so we're breaking the breaking into the, to the professional side. So we're doing really well. So that's a little bit of a background. Hopefully the Cliff Notes version is not too long. Um, I'm gonna, I don't have a presentation to pull up, but I'm gonna have some talking points. Feel free to jump in and, uh, and ask me any questions. I want the conversation to go the direction that you guys need the conversation to go. So please jump in and ask me any questions that you wanna ask me, but I'm gonna start with, with just some, some talking points and, um, and hopefully that'll help guide and, and allow you guys to, to learn and, and make some things pop in your head that maybe um, you, you will have an interest in. One thing, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask some questions and they're questions basically saying, these are the things that you need to have and be prepared for. So any question that I ask, it is not necessarily to, for you guys to answer, but any question I ask, you need to be prepared to answer that question. And if it's a yes or no question, you need to be to elaborate on your yes or, or your no. So whether you take notes now or go back and watch the recording, 
be just being very clear. Any question I throw out there, you need to be ready to answer that question, you know, in the process. Um, so the role of the search firm, a lot of people get confused sometimes in the search firm and they feel like, hey, search firms, they work for the schools, but also they're agents for candidates. And search firms, to be very clear, are not agents for candidates. They are hired by the school to do the search and fill out the candidate pool. We do not work as an agent to promote candidates or promote individuals to schools, either during the job search or in between a job search. However, getting in those search firm is an advantage um, because when there are searches, you want to be on, on their radar, but want to be clear that hey, we're here to help the client and the client is, uh, is the school. So we put together the candidate pool. We don't make the decision on, on who is hired by the school. We don't select the coach. We put together the candidate pool that the school works on, on pulling together and choosing from. Most of the time, the search firm is used for uh, a lot for confidentiality, um, a lot to not go through some of the formal processes. You don't have to go through some schools use the HR process with the search firm. Some schools don't. Um, if you don't use the HR process, and once again, I'm being really real, if you don't use the HR process, that doesn't open you up for some of the open, open uh, document and, and open law uh, opportunities for people to come back and, and, and want to pull information. Um, so sometimes people use the search firm for that specific level of confidentiality. Uh, search firms can go from one end of the spectrum to the other with, when it comes to what they do for the school. Sometimes it can just be sourcing names and handing that over to the school and the school running with the process. That, that it can also include the next step of sourcing names, but also managing the, uh, the interview process from, from logistics of what used to be phone interviews, now Zoom, right? And setting up all of that to in-person, whether it's travel to campus, whether it's meeting um, at a hotel, whether it's meeting at an airport, search firms do all of those logistics or, or have the ability to do those logistics for, for the client. Um, all the way to the end and helping when it comes to negotiations, uh, working with the coach or working with the, with the agent uh, and being the middle person between the athletic department or school communicating with the coach on you know, negotiating the salary and, and the final benefits of, for, for that position. So that's a little bit about the, the role of the search firm. Um, when you talk about, we're all here basically to get ready to be a head coach, right? Yeah, everything that you guys are doing from a professional development perspective is to help you guys find yourself to, to, to get to the seat, right? So let's talk about that. Building relationships on campus is a crucial component to being a, a future head coach and to be a, a current head coach. Um, so what are you doing to build relationships across campus to other units or other individuals on campus, especially upper administration? You must do a great job in your current role, right? You need to be a good coach. You need to know what you're doing. Um, but beyond that, there's this creating, creating this brand, Pat talked about a little bit, that you have to be able to do now that's different than where we were even five years ago. You know, creating a brand of, hey, when people see your name or say your name, what do they think about? Even though they may not have met you, even though they may not even know what, what you look like, what's your, what's your brand? How easily can they go find your brand or find who you are? Um, if your name pops up, can they easily get on their phone and boom, 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 LinkedIn and find you, or boom, 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 link Twitter or, or, or IG and find you and be able to scroll and see what you're about. If they can't do that quickly and easily, you're hampering yourself. You're hampering the ability for someone to figure out where you are, who you are, and know of you, you know, in an instant with the technology that, that we have. So, Creating a brand of yourself out there is very, very important. Creating your board of directors. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but you know, everybody should have a board of directors, meaning who, who you're, you're, you're the chair or, or you're the CEO or president of your company. Who's your circle of people sitting around the table that advise you on your steps along the way from a career perspective, from a personal perspective on your decision-making? Do you have a board of directors? 
and you have to put together a plan. You know, that means you have a plan. That doesn't mean your plan doesn't change. Your plan tweaks along the way as you move along in your process. Different roles, different positions, different things come up in your life that, that you change some priorities that you can tweak, but you still need to have some type of plan um, to where what you want to do and how you want to do it is, is very important. So professional development is a big deal. You guys get that because you're here. Not enough people get it. Um, they don't get that they need to be involved in these organizations. They need to be continuously learning outside of just their daily job. Carving out that time on your own to continue to be learning is a big deal. So part of professional development is um, networking up. So do you network up? Well, coaches, and I coach, right? I coached uh, basketball for, shoot, seven years. Coaches do a pretty good job of networking up within the coaching ranks, um, especially as an assistant, because they're networking and, and, and trying to, you know, climb the ranks and get connected to top head coaches or, coach, or co head coaches that are climbing the ranks. But at the end of the day, head coaches don't hire head coaches. So are you doing a good job of networking up with administration on your campus, with other schools within your conference, other schools in your vicinity, your community, even across the country, you have to network up administratively. Administrators hire head coaches, whether, whether, whether that's SWAs, whether that's deputy ADs, whether that's the people on campus that are within the athletic department that are the sport administrator for football, whether that's deputies, whether that's ADs, you have to network up so administrators know you because administrators are like coaches, man, they all talk to each other. And when it's time to figure out what's next or when it's time to fill in that list in their desk, right? You know, of, of, of who they're gonna look at when their head coach gets plucked or when they have a bad season or who they want to try to get to know, they start talking to each other. And, and, and I tell people, you know, it's never bad to go through, through a process because there's what I call the queue, right? You, when you get in the queue in a hiring process or an interview process, it allows you a chance to present yourself to another group of people. And that usually is administrators, right? Um, you know, or even, even coaches in that case. But administrators call each other and they say, hey, I know you just went through your search, you know, or you went through a search last year. Who did you, who did you like? Who did you talk to? And they give it over and say, man, we hired this person because they met specifically a certain need. But if we didn't have either this, this chemistry issue or this specific need that we needed to meet because of our community or because of our president, you know, we would have hired Coach Kenneth Black. He was super sharp on it. We just had to hire, you know, a leak because of this situation or this need specifically. And that's, that's being in the queue and people get hired just from that conversation all the time or get in the candidate pool just from that conversation all the time. So networking up, I'm not spending a lot of time talking about that, but start to get to know administrators, man. You know, within your athletic department, as you, as you travel, if there are opportunities to connect with administrators within other athletic departments, as you travel, take advantage of that, do that. Do you know your conference office? Do you know the sport administrator within your conference office for, for football? If you don't, you need to make that a priority. Once again, they call the conference office and say, hey, what do you know about Coach Jordan? What do you know about this dude? Or do you know this dude? Or, you know, one of my best friends is a sport administrator um, for football in the SEC, a guy by the name of Byron Hatch. And I call him as soon as I knew we, we got, who got the Gremlin search, say, hey, man, who you come across that, that's sharp to you? You know, in the SEC, that's a that's a that's an assistant or position coach or a coordinator. You know, happens all the time. So, get to know your conference office, your sport administrator for for football or the person that oversees the football championship of your conference has a, has a football championship. Get to know that person. They need to know who you are. Um, mentors, 
you know, have a well-rounded group of mentors. A lot of us sometimes go through our career, we get caught into mentors that we feel like um, are com we can get comfortable with all the time, or they're just like us, or they see things the way we see them. And that doesn't necessarily mean having a well-rounded group of mentors. Sometimes you need to have someone that that is totally on the other end of the spectrum from your yourself philosophically, um, the path that they took, um, their outlook on, on coaching, because they can help punch holes in some of the things or help you find some of the blind spots. You know, you talk about, you know, what are your blind spots when you look over your shoulder when you're driving, you need to recognize what those are. So having a well-rounded mentor group is something that you want to have because you want those individuals to be able to point out truthfully, you know, where your, where your blind spots are. Um, being a part of these peer group discussions is huge because it allows you to not only network up, but also network across the, across the board. And then, you know, what are your goals? Have, do you have a plan? Do you have things written down? Are you getting things accomplished? These are types of things, like I said, when I ask these questions, you're going to need to be able to speak to these things somewhere along the way, whether it's part of a formal interview or whether it's part of an informal conversation, you know, in the corner of the football stadium when you cross paths with an administrator while the team's warming up on game day. You're having conversations and stuff comes up and they say, hey, what'd you get accomplished this week? Or, you know, what, what have you accomplished in your career that you're proud of? People ask these random questions. You need to be prepared to, to answer these questions because a couple of the answers sparks things in people's heads like, man, that was, and uh, that was a light bulb. This guy is a little, this, this guy is sharp. And then once again, they talk to somebody later and it puts you on the radar. Like I said, please don't, uh, don't hesitate. You got some questions, man. You want to come out and, uh, and ask. Um, your board of directors. So when you include, when you think about putting together your board of directors, they, you know, there need to be peers, right? So guys in, in a group like this, but then there needs to be some industry leaders. Um, so individuals that are leaders in football that can, that, that have some level of, of notoriety, credibility, that have some level of, of, of history there, wisdom that you can, you can, you know, easily lean on as a member of your, you know, your board of directors. Um, obviously, you're going to have family. Those are the ones that, that know you and they're close to you and that, that understand your priorities better than anybody else. Um, but if you don't have kind of that circle, that board, you, you need to create that. And you need to be able to, like, you don't need to be, if, some, if I were to come on and ask you, who, who's your board of directors? It doesn't need to take you, you know, five minutes to come up with those names. Like it, you should be able to name those people off, boom, 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 really easily. Cause that means it's very clear who those people are, are for you. Not to say that they don't change, but if, 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 if that question comes up and that's not an interview question per se, but that's something to help you be very, very structured with knowing who those individuals are. So when it's time to make a call and have a conversation, you know, you know, who those are, you don't have to really think about it. So are you a CEO? So head coach is a CEO program. You guys know that better, better than I am. I do. Um, so being a CEO, how comfortable are you with public speaking? Can you engage with people? Do you feel, do you feel polished? You know, administrators use that word all the time. Is he polished? Is she polished when it comes to considering you know, bringing them in from a coaching perspective. Do you feel polished? If you don't, you need to get some practice in. You know, take every opportunity that you can to speak in front of a group. Even if it's 10 people you know, around a conference room table or a side room at lunch somewhere. Practice is practice. You'll get better. You'll get better at it. You know, I, went through, I went through that phase of, man, you know, I coach, but I didn't feel like I was comfortable with public speaking all the way to the point where, you know, I'm in front of, you know, 200, 250 people in the largest, you know, 
ballrooms and, and hotels giving presentations talking about NCAA rules and telling stories and how things played out and what you need to not do and walk in the room and not having any papers because I practiced and I got comfortable with it and, and the audiences grew and grew um, and I was comfortable. So you want to do that. Um, hey, hey, Kelly, let me pop in here real quick. Yeah. Uh, this is great stuff. I don't have a question, but Brennan, who I missed earlier because because he's on there as his iPhone. So I missed him his name and then I didn't see his face because I wasn't looking at faces. I was looking at names, but he's in here. One of our class, uh, a 20, 2021 Next Step class, and he's got to go to a recruit's house. So or at least got to talk to a recruit. I don't know where he's going, but he's got to talk to a recruit. So I wanted to pull him in. Brennan, if you could just talk a little bit about yourself, where you are, what you're doing, and how you won an ACC championship yesterday. <laughs> Uh, good evening, fellas. Pat, I appreciate you having me on. Kelly, I apologize for interrupting your. your that, that's that's my fault. That's one hundred percent on it. But yes, go ahead. I apologize for that. Um, you know, I took a different route as far as getting into college. I was a high school head coach. Uh, you know, and then ultimately the kids kind of lifted me up and and told me that I could. Why are you coaching us? You need to be coaching college ball and da da da. You know, so. I jumped into college and, you know, one of my college coaches gave me a chance to get in there and, you know, I GA first and, you know, kind of just worked my way up football, you know, like a lot of people on this uh, call, I just, you know, say thank God for the ball to save my life. Football has taken me everywhere and been all over, you know, Hawaii, Arizona, California, you know, I'm a kid from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So, you know, I never thought that I would go to places that I've been, you know, and, uh, you know, football is ultimately that vehicle that's taken me there. Um, from the perspective on how we won the championship last night, I think it's just, you know, um, being that minority coach, you know, when you're a minority coach, you, you, you do add a lot of value to a program and, uh, you know, being at Pitt, I think it's one of the first places that I've been where, you know, my personality and my, you know, I, I come off a little different because the way that I grew up. Um, and coach, coach Narduzzi really gave me the ability to, to let my head coaching abilities and let my personality and swagger and all that stuff permeate throughout the team. So not only was it different for the offense and the receivers and, you know, all the records we set this year, but, you know, it was, I, I, I shared that with all the coaches and all the players and my story. And, and I kind of, you know, created a cult, a different culture, kind of helped change the culture there at Pitt. And, you know, we just had a really healthy culture and, and the players loved each other and the, and the coaches loved the players and, you know, and, and the coaches loved each other. So I think that, you know, the biggest thing was just love and, you know, and I think that when we went out there, there was no doubt in our minds that we would go get it done. I mean, we only lost two games this season and both more by a field goal. So, yeah. you know, when you think about that, we, we really were – right there every single game either winning blowing a team out or you know we let it slip away because of a turnover here or turnover there so our guys really fought their ass off and worked hard and, and trusted everything that the coaches and we got some great coaches you know obviously i'm the youngest guy on staff uh being around coaches i've learned a lot this year being around coaches that are in their 60s you know like i've never been around coaches that are that much older than me you know there's coaches 30 years older than me on staff so really just taking a notebook and learning from each of those guys. And, and I think that, you know, you have to have the ability to listen and learn from everybody in the room. I've always learned from if it was a GA or a, a head coach, a equipment manager, you know, whatever, anybody that I could take a nugget from that would help me be a better coach and help players. I, I've always done that. So I don't want to take up too much more of y'all time. I got to go get this recruiting done, but I appreciate you. And Kelly, I apologize again. Hopefully that doesn't hurt me in the future if I'm ever, you know, in, in the certain <laughs> terms, going. He'll he'll remember that though now, which is a good thing. Right? I will. Thanks, coach. <laughs> hey, right. And you were you were a guy too that came up. Multiple people had recommended you, and I, you know, I've I've seen and heard about you for a couple of years now too. But you were a guy that a bunch of guys that I respect that know this that level, um, and and the most talented guys, and they said this is a guy you should have a part of this list. So that's why you were on it. So I appreciate you. We'll talk more offline. Go get that kid if you really want him that bad. Go get him. No doubt. Appreciate y'all. All right, boss. All right, Kelly, again, my apologies. Okay. Uh, not seeing that. This is great stuff. I will shut up. Continue, please. And if anyone, does anyone have any questions for Kelly on any the stuff questions? we talked about before? Anything? I, the one question I had as far as like you talk about 
that that group of of coaches you want to have your your board you you have and i know it's a little bit different when we're talking different sports and whatnot but you have like a like you should have four people three people you should know your coordinators and a position guy or like what is your thought process if you were to ask me that question what would you want to hear from a football yeah. guy yeah so when i talk about that that group or, or board of directors this is not football specific at all like this is this could be you know right. a, a, a recruiting coordinator on y'all's basketball staff that's going through you know a similar process or, or trying to get some things done that yet you can bounce things off of so this is you know this is this is different than you know your staff right so that that you need to be prepared with what your staff is going to look like, right? So that question is going to definitely come up. What is your staff going to look like? Either specifically who they are, or what 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 they're going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a different. You want to divide out your board of directors. Is, they're they're the ones that are there to help you with decision making. You know, with steps along the way, with guidance, with counsel, with wisdom, which is different than. What is your staff going to look like? Can you assemble a great staff? And what is that great staff going to look like? Got you. Cool. And you want to be prepared with, with that. Um, you know, are you in tune with just what's going on in, in the industry? Right. So there, there are certain hot button things, right, that, that you want to be able to speak to from an administrative perspective. You know, forget the X's and O's part of, of a conversation with the administrator. Administrators are gonna wonder, hey, talk to me about mental health. You know, talk to me about student athlete experience, student athlete well-being. They're gonna wanna hear your thoughts on, you know, talk to me about, you know, the priority of, of academics. They're gonna wanna hear your thoughts on the off the field industry trends, you know, um, so, whatever you need to do to tap into sometimes stepping aside and knowing about what's going on in college athletics outside of just football specific or on the field, who's winning, who's losing, who's doing what, who's doing this, what are the hot trends in, in, um, in coaching philosophy? You wanna know what are, the, what are some of the hot trends or hot topics generally from a college athletics perspective that every every sport is dealing with with their kids. We mentioned the, the social media brand. You just got to do it. I mean, some people, and I was telling Pat this, like, man, I, I know people that it just comes so natural that, you know, they're good on social media. They're good with networking with people. They work the room. They communicate and keep up with people, keep in touch naturally. Some people, they know it's not, they're not, it doesn't come natural to them. So they carve out the time to work on it themselves or they hire someone to help them. But it is something that you just have to do now. You have to stay in contact with, with people that you cross paths with and you have to create a social media brand. And if you, and you have to do a self-assessment of whether you do that well, one, or Two, whether you're going to carve out the time and do that, or three, knowing yourself well enough to know that you're not going to carve out the time to do it, and you're going to hire someone to help you do it. But don't don't lie to yourself and say, I do it well and don't do it, or I'm going to carve out the time to do it, or I'm going to schedule the time to do it, and then don't do it, and then you're just lying to yourself and you're messing up. So just be truthful to yourself to just say, hey, I, I roll with this, I'm good, or I'm gonna set aside this time and I'm gonna plug away. And it's not necessarily saying, hey, I'm the greatest. You're saying, you're, you're putting out there the successes of your program, but that you're involved in them, right? And you get you get picture view and a graphic or you work with your, your sports info people. Um, or if you just, you know, once again, being true to yourself, say, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna hire someone. You hire someone, you, you know, you get with Pat or Pat can recommend, you know, whatever, you, you hire someone to, to do it because that's, that's part of it now that wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a big part of it three, four, five years ago because um, everybody, the administrators are looking and the search firms are looking at, you know, what your brand is. Um, what else? 
um, how to get involved in a, in a search. I know that's, that's you wanna hear that, like how do I get involved? When you see something pop up that interests you, you need to be really clear with yourself on, is this a good fit for, for me? Like, and, and you guys know, you know, you get, when you get an opportunity and it doesn't go well because it, that, it wasn't a good fit or whatever the reason was, you may not get that opportunity again. And, it, and the, st the stats show that minorities don't get the opportunity again to get to get back in the seat at a at a high rate. Um, so be be very intentional about the fit. You know, you need you need your head job to be one that you feel you can be successful in because it is a good fit. You don't want to get it just because it's a head job. I promise you, you don't you don't want to do it just because you you get a chance to be in the seat because it does you no good to be in the seat for three years, things don't go well because things cannot go well that are outside of your control, you know, the, because of the community, because non-support, you don't really, you're not really supported by the administration, not really supported by the university. Um, whatever those things are that could go wrong outside of your control that make you not be successful and then you're out of the spot in three years and you don't ever get another shot because of whatever, you know. So be very intentional about that. You know, do you have a connection to the AD or some person of influence at that school? So when you see that position pop up, that's what you want to think about. How am I connected to this AD or how am I connected to someone in upper administration within that athletic department? Or how am I connected to someone that may have some level of influence at that school with that AD? So that's how you kind of survey your network, right? You survey your network from a coaching perspective, from an administrative perspective, from your board of directors, say, what connection do I have? And, and, and there may be a connection to the president, there may be a connection to a, a high level booster, once again, AD, uh, deputy AD, but you want to survey that. Um, does the school fit your profile? You know, is it a good fit? All of that. Um, how can your current head coach help you? How can your agent help you? And how can the search firm help you? So once again, going back to the search firm, the search firm is not your client and you are not the client of the search firm. The client of the search firm is a school. So you have no allegiances to a search firm. You wanna to get to know any and all search firms you have the opportunity to get to know. You wanna to talk to everybody. You know, you want any, any firm that's involved in the hiring process, you don't want to just be a, you know, a turnkey guy or a, or a Parker executive search guy or a corn fairy guy or a renaissance guy. Like, you want to know them all. You want them all to know you because you're not their client. The school is their client. Um, so can your current head coach help you get involved in the search? Can your agent help you get involved in the search? Can the search firm help you get involved in a search? And that means being prepared, you know, beforehand with communicating with, you know, as many search firms as you can, you can communicate with. Um, at Renaissance, we talk to people. You know, I can't say that for everybody, you know, but, you know, we, we talk to people. You got, like I said, you got a way to con connect with me and get a hold of me. Um, we have conversations, we'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations to, to an, answer questions, allow you to ask questions, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you got a way to contact me. Pat has um, information on me as well. So we talk to people. Um, going back to the conference, you know, what, what would the people in the conference say about you if they're, they're asked? You know, you want them to be able to say something. You know, you want, it's not, you don't want them to say, I don't know who this guy is. Um, so the sport administrator, once again, do, do they know you? Um, it's great if the commissioner knows you. It's super great if the commissioner knows you. If you have find a way to make contact and develop some type of relationship with the commissioner um, of your conference, that's excellent. 
Um, but at a minimum, whoever is overseeing or, or responsible for football administration within the conference, conference, you want to do that. Your references. You want to make your references count. Like you do not want five, six, seven people calling on your behalf about a job to the people that can make a decision for the job. It's overkill. It's almost like, I mean, it's almost like if you got silver bullet to, to shoot the werewolf or whatever, like you want to save your silver bullets, you know? So you want, you want to have, if you got one or two strong or strong references, those are the people that you want to put in the console. If you feel good about, once again, you're going to have references on your list for, for, for a firm or for an institution to call them, right? But if you have a couple people that you feel like are powerful people and are going to speak right about you, those are one, your one or two silver bullets that you want those people to put in a call to the AD or the president or whatever. You know, the AD does not need to be getting five and six calls from, from people on your behalf, um, especially if they don't know those people really well. President doesn't need to be getting five or six calls. They need to be getting one or two powerful people calls on your behalf. So keep that, keep that in mind. Um, so that's kind of a couple of things about getting into the process. Within the process, you need your professional portfolio. That's probably not anything new or different that, that you guys haven't, haven't heard. You need a resume, but you need your, you know, your, your good on the eyes professional portfolio. Um, you want to be able to present an executive image. Um, so you want to present a, a CEO image when it comes to your portfolio and when it comes to time for you to get on camera and speak or have a conversation. You want to present the image of I'm run, I'm going to run the, run your company, which is your football program. Um, you want to have an elevator pitch. That's something probably that you guys have heard as well. Being able to tell who you are, and you know, in a couple minutes' time, when somebody asks a question about you, you know, you want to have that elevator pitch to be able to hit on who you are and the things they need to know and the high points on what they need to remember about you within a couple minutes. Um, being able to answer the questions succinctly and with energy, smiling, you know, and, and if you're on the phone interview, smile. It comes across, you know, and these are just a little bit of tidbits, right? Like, you know, it comes across, even though they can't see you, it comes across when you're talking if, if, if you're smiling, um, but being able to tell stories when you're interviewing either phone, Zoom, in person, if you can tie in stories to your experience, then that makes you a whole lot more memorable and personable and, and gives people the ability to connect with you. you know, and it doesn't need to be a 10 minute story. But you know, tying in stories to explain what you've gone through or the experience that you have, or you know, them, you know, answering a question about, you know, you get asked questions, you know, about tell me about you know this time when you faced adversity, or tell me about this time um, when you were the, the only voice in the room on, on a topic and how you how you manage that, you know, those types of things. You want to tie a story to, to your answer. Um, think about, you know, practical answers to, you know, your questions and, and practice some of those answers. Some questions you just know that you're going to get. You're going to go into a process, you know, practicing is, is, is very important. But overall, you want to be likable. You want to smile. You want to bring energy. Um, you want to you want to know who's in the room. So knowing who's in the room or who's on the line or, or who's a part of the call helps you be, be prepared. Um, and, and you can always ask that, whether it's a search firm or the school, if you're going to be on a phone interview or a Zoom interview, or if you go in person, you have you know, a day's worth or half a day's worth of interview, 
you can ask who you're going to meet with, who you're going to talk to. And when you get that information, you want to go on the athletic department directory. You want to go on those people's LinkedIn because you may find some, once again, that web weaves, right? You may find some connection that makes them connect to, to you, whether it's being in the same, working at the same school along the way, being from the same area of the country, going to the same college, something you never, you never know. This college athletics world is so tight a circle, you never know. So you wanna know who's on those calls, who's in the interview room, because being prepared is going into it and knowing who they are and, 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 and having some kind of connection because sometimes you can go in an interview and just talk about something real quick and you know the person sitting in the room went to such and such school and they probably ate at such and such restaurant in this college town and you know that you're, you're going to bring that up and they just like light up from that, you know? But that, that's from you doing doing the doing the research. So that's just a couple of little little tidbits. Um, don't talk about salary or incentives or compensation in an interview. Don't bring it up. It'll come if you do your job. It'll come up soon enough and and later. So you don't be the one to, to bring up that stuff. Um, don't badmouth anybody when you're when you're having a conversation. Um, don't compare yourself to the previous administration uh, or not the, pre the previous coach, coach or head coach or their staff. Don't do any kind of comparisons of what you will do that's different than what they did or your philosophy being different than what they did. You talk about what you do, you talk about your philosophy, but don't tie it in or compare it to, to what, you know, what has just happened in the past. You don't want to do that. Um, Make sure you're, if you ask questions, they're relevant. You know, they're relevant questions. You know, feel comfortable that the questions that you, you ask are relevant to, to the process. Um, you know, like I said, being prepared and knowing who, who's in the room um, is very important. I think those are really the things I wanted to hit on, man. You guys got to have some, some questions. I talked, to, talked a lot. I, I took the conversation directed direction that I thought, you know, would be good just going kind of through the layers, but ask away if you got you got time, if you got some questions for me. I thought that was great stuff. Appreciate it, Kelly. Anybody got questions? I got a quick one real quick. Um, what are you talking about? Uh, when you're looking into a, a particular, you know, job that might suit you and you're looking at the background and you find out that it does suit you uh, and you're, you're trying to go about seeing connections on the campus that you possibly have and you come up short, say, for instance, you don't have any true connections that are right there. It might be one apart. Maybe I worked with somebody, you know, that um, he worked with at another institution or something like that. Um, how do you go about, you know, reaching out and seeing if there could possibly be an interest or, or it could possibly be something to go further with? Yeah, I, I would I would start with reaching out. Well, one one question is if you have representation or not, because sometimes that person do some of that stuff for you. Um, if not, or if you do, um, you know, it's pretty easy to figure out who the sport administrator is for um, that school. You know, who's the football person, right? Mm -hmm. Who who's in charge of charge of football? That person is usually going to be the right hand when it comes to the logistics of running through the search for the AD. So it's usually that person, the AD, that's sitting around figuring out how they're going to do what they're going to do. Um, so so reaching, reaching out, like you don't want to not reach out to that person and, and maybe even copy an AD on, on that information, right? Figuring, trying to figure out if there is a search firm involved usually they'll respond and say, this is a search firm that's involved, C contact, you know, Kelly Brooks at Renaissance, blah, 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 blah. You know, so that's another touch point of being able to say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna send information to, to Kelly Brooks as well. So those are the, the kind of the first couple of steps. You know, obviously if there's an official posting on HR, you gotta submit that information, right? You just gotta, you just gotta, gotta do that to, to even you know do what they ask you to do, but those are the, the kind of a couple of steps. But to keep it very real, like you gotta 
you have to really, you know, scrub the data, right? Like you got to dive deep to find what kind of connection you might have to, to the place. Because the other, otherwise, you're another name going in the pot, you know? And I don't mean that in a bad way, but you want to try to find a way to get yourself um, rising to another level than just being another name in the pot. And that's through some type of tie to the place, to the per to someone working in the department or to the search firm. Because if you if you got some kind of tie, then you know, even if they don't, they, even if they're not involved in football at all, even if they may be, you know, the head basketball coach or, you know, shoot the the you know, recruiting coordinator for basketball or whatever. And if they send your name to the person in the department that they work with, then that's another level of, hey, such and such signs off on this person. And even though they may not know nothing about football, they think this person is a worthy candidate to take a look at, you know? So digging as far as deep as you can to get some kind of connection to the place is going to set yourself up to be different than just submitting your name in the pot as as a coach um and and that i'm not once again i'm not saying that that makes it impossible but it changes the dynamic of being involved in, in the opportunity thank you which makes it harder too you know it's it's you know it's hard you know, it's not a, not an easy thing to have a tie to a, a, an opening. Um, so, but you got to put in the work to find find whatever some semblance that you can get to where at the end of the day, to make it simple, you want someone to send your name that's connected to the place. Because if they're connected to the place, then that makes someone look at your stuff a little harder. Awesome, thanks. Yep. Well, somebody was popping on question-wise. Somebody, I thought somebody unmuted. No, anything else? Anybody? I, I have a quick, I have a quick question. Um, you mentioned the professional, uh, professional uh, portfolio. Um, and so my question is, um, in regards to obviously your resume, um, you know, your cover letter, things of that nature. What are some other things that you would include in a professional, a professional uh, portfolio? And, and let, me, let, me, let me introduce first. This is Artie Allen. So you don't know who he is. He's a head coach at a JUCO college here in Southern California, uh, Victor Valley, right? Victor Valley? Yes, yes. Victor Valley College. Right. So you know who he is. Quick intro. Yeah. And the rest. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, a resume is a resume, right? It's the written version of everything that you've done in your professional career as far as job-wise. Your coaching portfolio is more focused on, you know, those accomplishments, you know, more so than your responsibilities, you know, because hopefully if someone reads I was offensive coordinator or passing game coordinator or um, defensive uh, co-defensive coordinator, passing game coordinator. Most of the time, some people have some understanding of what that is. So you have to list all these responsibilities that on your on your coaching portfolio that uh, that you do in that role. So you're really focused on your accomplishments along the way in those in your coaching stops on the. So that's the main two differences in what the you know the the graphically inclined, good looking coaching portfolio does. And then what the resume does, the resume is I've worked at all these places and these were my responsibilities. And, you know, here's my degrees. And this is when I worked here. And this, you know, res resume, those are the two differences. Um, so as far as what you would include, that's kind of what you focus on on that, on that professional, on that coaching portfolio is what are, what, what are your accomplishments along the way? What did you accomplish or the teams that you, you coached accomplished along the way that jumps out? You know. Cool. Anything yeah, else? That, that makes sense. Thank you. Good. Sorry. A anybody else? One more? Yay, nay. 
real quick, just to follow up on that. How long should that be? You know, so should it be a page for every place you play? You, you, you know, previously coached at? Should it be detailing, you know, your all Americans, your 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 acad your academic accomplishments that your guys did, you know, your recruiting background, you know, where you recruited, you know, how detailed and how many pages should that actually be? Yeah, people administrators have short, you know, attention spans, right? So they don't want to look at five. 10, five to 10 pages worth of information on you. So from a resume perspective, however you can get it to two pages, you work to get it to, to two pages the best you, the best you can. Um, you know, three pages at the most. Um, from a portfolio perspective, it's a little easier on the eyes. Things are bigger, you know, right? Fonts usually bigger and graphics are in different places, it's okay to scroll through two or three pages of that. But then when you talk about four and five pages, you're getting, you know, you're getting a little long. So then you want to think about prioritizing, you know, condensing. Um, a lot of it is, hey, I want to make sure it's on there and I can speak to more details when it comes to time to have the conversation. I can, I can do that. So if it's something that you can speak to the more details, then you can have it on there as a heading, but not too many, you know, bullets on that portfolio. But yeah, you do want to talk about there's academic achievements. You want to, you know, you want to have that. You have all, all Americans, you have guys that have gone, you know, gone on to the next level and played professionally at some level, CFL, NFL. You want to, you know, you want to be able to demonstrate that type of information as well. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Awesome. Right. Then I enjoy it, guys. Like I said, you know, in the chat, connect with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. Um, like I said, the website has, you know, information about Renaissance. Um, the website has our, our database at the bottom of the homepage. It says become a candidate. You can put your information in our database. It'll take you 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes at the most to fill that out. Um, but like I said, we're open to having conversations about how we can help you and point you in the right direction and getting to know you and all that kind of stuff as well. And Pat, uh, thank you. We look forward yeah. to being more involved and coming on and, and being involved however you want us to be involved. Definitely. And, I, and, and certainly like these guys, especially part of our next up class is like, they're going to do a talk. Hopefully they're going to they're want to do a talk if they can do it. Well, I'll shoot that your way. Like, here's a guy. And again, some of these guys are, are probably at that level where they're pretty close to being a head coach. Uh, I don't know if any of these guys have interviewed. I don't know everyone. Um, maybe they've already interviewed for positions. I don't know. But there's guys that are close and there's guys that are, are a couple of years away. But I'll shoot those over to you. So you got them. So you can take a look at it and you can get get a feel for how they coach and teach. Obviously, that's one small aspect of this whole deal. But I think it's a good a good starting point from this. Yeah. So I, I appreciate you, Kelly. Uh, more than anything, I, I wanted to, to get your perspective on this side of it, which most coaches don't know that side of it. We can understand what other people say, but to hear it from your mouth is great. And then also get you to see some of these faces. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, if they come across your table, you see a, a resume. It's like, oh, all right. I, where do I know that guy from? Oh, he was on that thing. Cool. All right. There's, then maybe you hit me up. Maybe we didn't talk, but you hit me up. And I'm yeah. like, oh, this dude, this yeah. dude legit. I love it. I've worked at all levels. Like I said, D2, Atlantic 10, and Xavier, and, and SWAG, and, you know, the biggest of big, Alabama, and NCAA, and being at the NCAA, I've been on so many campuses, and I appreciate all levels and, and what people work with based on the different, different resources. I have, I probably have a different appreciation than most people do when it comes to guys working at different levels and, and trying to, to move and shake and, and climb, so no, no level is uh is too small for me to 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 help so like i said we're here guys i, I appreciate uh, it. thank thanks. you see you guys see you and for everybody else thanks again for coming on the guys that are part of the class i'll i'll hit you up separately we'd love to talk further about some more stuff anybody else if you need anything from me please let me know i'm always available at any time appreciate you guys have a good night